We got two incredibly strong teams here today. Like we said, it's going to be Coastal Bend College versus the State Fair Community College. And while we sort out a couple of little things on the audio side here, Thank let's you. just start going through <laughs> some of the teams. It should be good now. <laughs> Coastal Bend College is going to be their uh, a full freshman squad, which is always awesome to see. You love to see new talent here. And Brazilian Bacon, WaffleCon369, and Caruso. That's going to be Alex, Jake, and Aaron. They're going to be the team for the Cougars here today. And Tugboat, can we hear your incredible voice on camera yet, my friend? I really hope so. Everything should be figured out. They're a classic cast for mistake. I'm out here thanking John for making our jobs easier and then actively making his job harder. So what does that, what does that tell you about all FBI? Type? But, but yes, huge shout out to these two teams, State Fair Community College and Coastal Bend College. Like you said, we're looking at Dylan Mead as the only non, non-freshman here. Of course, the National Junior College Athletic Association, the sports side here. That's only the two-year colleges. And from what I said earlier, I'm not sure if you guys heard it, but obviously the NJCAAE founded a couple of years ago is the only national esports association exclusively for those two year colleges where they got something like 60 schools from all over the regions of the United States of America just within this past two years. So a fast growing one indeed. Taking a look, <clears throat> what you already mentioned it, uh, what two and three for Coastal College, Coastal Bend College, excuse me, out of Texas, State Fair Community College coming in four and zero, number one in their groups. Have not dropped one yet, and that is Warrensburg, Missouri. Is that correct? Uh, as far as I am aware, that is. Uh, as far, uh, we'd have to hear our production <laughs> tell us otherwise. But for right now, we're going to stick with that and stick with these two incredible teams coming into this one, with both having a very good chance at winning this. Again, at two and three, they really have had a pretty successful season so far. If they can go five hundred here on three and three, it would be massive for them. But it's all going to be said many times over. That's a lot easier said than done. Against an undefeated team who are coming into this with a lot of confidence, you really need to take, well, all the confidence you've gained and really try and run it against them. Yeah, uh, especially given what's like kind of on the uh, what's, what's on the docket here. Coastal Bend, they take this, they improve that even 500 at 3-3. Three and three. State Fair take this, they'll improve that undefeated record staying 5-0. and zero. So if you're talking about kind of what's on the Line right here, given that State Fair Community College playing this incredibly competitive matchup here, we're going to be looking, at, like, honestly, at, at, because of how competitive this is, Bass, it's almost a guarantee to drop a map at some point. But then again, we will see how State Fair Community College plays here today. The Young Bucks out of Missouri have been playing very well so far this season. Oh, yeah, 100%. But I'd have to agree with you. I'd be surprised if we walk away with a sweep here on either side. Reverse sweep, maybe we see that. That'd be a pretty interesting scenario here. But most likely, we're going to have a pretty good back and forth. And that that's really what we're looking for here. Because it's the match of the week, we're really just looking for a really good back and forth between the two teams that gives us some good Rocket League because that's always what we want, right, Tug? Just some good Rocket League. Yeah. Just some good Rocket League. That's all I want, you know, a uh, 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 nice solid sleep, you know, a bunch of water, a uh, <laughs> solid meal, and some good Rocket League. That's all That's all a, a young tugboat needs to thrive and survive, right? There you go. <laughs> we'll be certain to have that on board here today. Now, Baz, correct me if I'm wrong, but this is just standard rules as far as Rocket League games, best of five or first of three, however you want to say it. There's no ties capable in the great game of Rocket League. Five-minute quarters, then if the score is tied, we'll move on to the classic overtime situation after that. Yeah, as far as I am aware, that is what we're going to be playing with here today. I've actually played, or well, casted, I should say, in a league that had a best of six once with the possibility to tie, and I thought that was a very interesting sort of like format hmm. change here. But listen, classics are a classic for a reason, and I think we're going right back to the classics here today. A best of five, first of three, like you said. However you phrase it, it's the main way to play Rocket League, and it really is one of the best ways to determine which team is the better one on the day. If you even drop those first two games, the amount of reverse sweeps I've seen in a best of five i can't even count it at a certain point yeah i mean best i mean that, that is uh that's why we that's why we do what we do is for the reverse sweeps and whatnot obviously sweeps are you know can be less exciting and except of course when they happen from underdogs right we just saw some of that recently in some of uh, the higher tiers of rocket league and whatnot but just talking about this within here there have been sweeps there have been reverse sweeps so far in the njc AAE season so far will we see that here today uh, I want some of the second, none of the first, right? I want, I want some of the game five situations. I want overtimes and everything else. I want earned W's right here, Bass. Three zero sweeps. Don't want to see it. 
I, I've had the pleasure of casting a, a decent amount of Game 7 and Game 5s over the last week of, I think, the, I want to call it probably 10 to 15 series that I have casted. About 10 of them have gone to either OT or to a Game 5. So I've there got a go. little bit of uh, either a curse or luck, depending on how you want to look at it right <laughs> now, depending on which team you are here. But I'm hoping that rubs off here on the NJ double, or NJC double AE. One day I will get that to roll off the tongue, but unfortunately <laughs> I might be good with words when it comes to the ones I'm speaking to you guys. Talking about the go. teams that we are talking about, the sponsors that work for us and the teams we work for, unfortunately, can sometimes get jumbled. But that does not take away from the incredible things that they are doing here. Like we said before, as a person who actually did go to a junior college, to see a, a league like this with this much support, just so yeah. awesome to see. Yeah, absolutely. I am, uh, uh, my, my graduation year was a couple years ago now, but there wasn't really the same amount of support there in collegiate esports then. Now, like having an, an association exclusively for squads only coming in from these junior colleges, the two year colleges, is, uh, is music to my ears. Costa Bend College on the left in the blue, St. Fair Community College right in the red. Yo, this is, oh my word, I was going to say, going to be an interesting back and forth, one which we expect to be a little bit tentative to start off, but uh, uh, no such hesitation at all. Peachy, already the first goal. Yeah, that's going to be pretty early here as well. Seconds or so in. Waffle cone, Coruscant, that's what we said we are going to say, and Brazilian bacon, making up your Ghost of College squad. Sent a message over to Coruscant, seeing if maybe they had some sort of other pronunciation. But honestly, this is probably my favorite response from a player whenever, you know, you don't exactly know how to pronounce them. Just sort of gives me a quick, hey, pronounce it however you want. Right now, I'm going to have to pronounce hey, it as the star-studded striker as he has just scored it. Coastal Bend right back into it. Yeah, exactly. 30 seconds in, this is basically back to true zero, the true neutral situation. Bass are completely tied up right now. Now you just have a little bit less time to go with this one. Members of Coastal Bend doing a great job of answering on that one, Bass. They are, and now the question is who's going to answer. Oh, next wow, okay. <laughs> my, oh my. <laughs> yeah, uh, these teams barely giving us any time to really talk here, Bass. I can barely talk at all. I literally wasn't expecting that so much. I think I just choked on air trying to get my words out of my mouth. And uh, now all of a sudden we're at a two to one score line here. And we're 30 seconds into this one talk boat. Yeah, did not and did not uh, see you nor I saying that one uh, about about a match here already. 30, uh, 35, 45 seconds into this one already scored the price crazy stuff. Pop up play from Corusal. Warhawk's gonna be on the other side with a weaker block and an easy shot. Decently open as well, so that's gonna be Waffle Cone coming in for a demo after teammate misses a relatively open net. Oh, that would have been huge for the side of Coastal Bend, but the good thing is they've still got some offensive pressure here. They're gonna keep pushing and see if Ooh, they can find no another opportunity. Brazilian Bacon with a huge opportunity to try and put a shot into the back of the net, but just not quite able to make a touch on the ball. But I like this. Coastal Bend definitely started to get in the face of State Fair, and like you said, for a team that's undefeated, you can start off strong against them. There's absolutely a chance that you can take the win. Yeah, so State Fair technically in the lead right now, but a lead of one, no real lead in Rocket League. Bacon over to the left side, Waco Cone kind of come in at this one. Misses it across the right side, cross up, picks up for right now. Dylan CM on the run, on the middle. Rosal comes up, does not hit that one. Digital Bacon, Digital Bacon. Brazilian Bacon, the last player back. Take that one, but a cut across the middle, and the Warhawk strikes again. Or strikes for the first time, excuse me. <laughs> there we go, though. State Fair continuing to do the same thing. State Fair is having to do throughout this entire game. Just continuing to put on those quick counterattacks. And while Coastal Bend, in my opinion, probably has had the majority of the pressure throughout this game, it kind of feels like State Fair don't really need the pressure. They're very quick to the ball. If you give them an opportunity, Ooh, I was going to say they'll strike Whoa. with an inopportune moment there. Caster Curse was going to show itself. Uh, unfortunately, it shows itself in game number one, though. Yeah, so that was a pretty open situation for State Fair, an easy take across the top, and then a kind of miscoordination on the other side. It's, it's right there, there's nobody to block it, then coming in, that's gonna be kind of a flick play over the top. Or not quick necessarily, but just kind of a wonkiness, something that is unexpected. 
have been unexpected there. No one really ever expects a 50-50 to pinch out like that. But uh, unfortunately for Coastal Bend, they might need to start getting prepared for this. So far throughout this game, halfway through, we've seen a plethora of shots, four to three on each side. Two saves, though. It does kind of feel like the defense isn't really being prioritized here. And, well, that's somewhat expected considering it's game number one. But I think the first team to really start locking down that back half of boat is going to be the one to start controlling the series. I can definitely agree with that, Fast. As they're seeing Crowsdale try and bring this out, that's really just something that Coastal has had problems with up to this point. Dylan stopping this from pouring it out. Teammates for Safer are going to be able to rotate in on this one. Brazilian popping this one way up. Corsell dedicating a lot right here. It comes up. It just gets a little bit too low on this one because it's not able to get quite so high. Did Brazilian bacon on the back. Now on the save and trying to bring this one out. Put out of the path yet here. Coastal Ben is doing a whole lot more pressure, and you knew this was going to come eventually. Stay fair with their fifth goal, and I think I'm starting to recognize it. Stay fair took a second to warm up, but now that they are here, they have got a fire underneath them. Yeah, kind of putting the spoiler on top of that one. Is Warhawk just saw him circling there for a second, biding the time. Comes in and strikes. 5 1 now with about two minutes left on the clock. Peachy hit down bottom. Meeting up there is Brazilian. Dylan actually gets it way, way ahead of this one. Now coming out and taking it from the side. Curacao with a little pass play from the teammate, which will also be forced to pick this one up after a hit on over to the right side. Meeting in the middle is Peachy. Members of State Fair trying to set this one up. Oh my god, what a hit. Oh my word, I don't know what's more impressive. The placement on the shot there, or the save being made. Hey, we said we needed to see some teams start controlling defense. Uh, apparently, State Fair want to be that team. Yeah, really showing up right there in that uh, in that category. 100%. Coruscant across the middle. Peachy in this one against the wall. And again, little double tap there to try and continue on this pressure. Walfcon stopping this one. Dylan coming up for it. And just kind of seems like Coso is more content to take this one off across the bottom. Style here right now. Coastal Ben are still throwing everything at their offense and trying to keep up that overwhelming pressure, but meanwhile, it feels like State Fair have decided that no, we don't need to keep this upward pace of play. We can play rather patiently, and as long as we find those opportunities, then we should be able to take advantage of them. And speaking of which, this could be another shot. Dylan not quite, quite able to make the touch, but Warhawks there for the follow up. Is anyone there for the save? No, indeed not. And State Fair increase their lead by another. Yes, five up right now. Warhawk just kind of showing off what they can do in the air. Waffle Cone kind of put in a bad situation, kind of ending up perpendicular to the ball as it is bouncing in. So that's going to be a tough shot for just about anybody. 45 seconds left in this one. We're going to say the game one is done. Five scores in less than 40 seconds is not going to happen. This is not going to happen. Sometimes you got to be somewhat realistic here in what you are watching. As much as we want to hype this yeah. one up and say that both teams have got a shot, the shot here for Coastal Bend is going to be in the next game. They're going to have to lift their wounds and get right back on into this one. And again, I still do feel like they are in this series and very much in this series. You know, if they can start to prioritize their defense a little bit and you know, get less of this clumping in the corner that we just saw, I think they should be all right. Their offense is proven. They very much have the power to stand up to a team like State Fair. Yeah, especially the way they kind of came out at this match. We saw that intensity and kind of intensity and tenacity. It's two things right there. Shot across the middle, almost a goal to go for the side of uh, of Coastal. They're not going to be able to put that one in the doggy bag. 6-1 will be your scoreline for game numero uno. Uh, and really, that was just Warhawk almost, uh, almost all day, right? Taking a look at these numbers here. Warhawk, three shots on, made all three. Peachy, two shots on, made all two. Dylan, one shot up, one shot in. 100% completion ratio for State Fair all the way across the board. That is just unreal. I mean, listen, we kind of expected this going into this one. State Fair, are, like we said, they're by far the team in favor here. But it's one of these things where it still doesn't necessarily feel like it's completely out of hand here. Like we mentioned many times, minor adjustments, and it does kind of feel like this is going to be much more of an even series here. And while it hasn't necessarily become that even series yet, it is going to very soon. I think that we're going to definitely get a back and forth. Like we mentioned, if we see a sweep here, it'd be rather surprising it is possible. I don't want to say that it is impossible, especially with the way that State Fair look right now. But if Coastal Bend can make some minor adjustments, they're absolutely still in this. Yeah, it's really just those minor adjustments at the end of the day. Uh, given that the, the 
minor adjustment, really, the main thing that needs to change is the just the defensive performances from Coastal right here. Uh, State Fair came through. They have the you know the three saves on there. There's plenty of shot attempts up, but at the end of the day, it's just not going to be enough to, to kind of prevent that onslaught. Yeah, this is going to be difficult here. Hey, listen, at the end of the day, it is still a very solid team here. As much as Coastal Bend do have a shot, they really need to start taking it to State Fair here and making sure that they don't give them the same sort of pressure as before. That's something we saw a lot as well. A lot of booming clears that kind of went to empty space. And when you have a mm -hmm. match with a lot of empty space there, it means whichever team is just a little bit more mechanical is usually going to be the one to take advantage of that empty space. Yeah, and uh, I mean, empty space is really not something anything you can get on over to the likes of State Fair. There, uh, again, what is on the line right now is this squad going forth and in, in completing another another uh, segment of their undefeated streak right now. So that's uh, up up and down on as to which team this match matters to more. This is going to be an interesting one. Uh, like you said, it's one of these things where, you know, getting 500, massive for Coastal Bend here. For State Fair, mm -hmm. it's also a really important one because they want to try and keep this momentum. Just keep on this undefeated and keep just kind of trucking through with it. But let's find out. Game number two underway here. Like we said, an important game for Coastal Bend, but an important one for State Fair as well if they want to hold on to their momentum. And it does look like State Fair already holding on to their momentum. Shots out the gate. A little bit off target, but oh boy, State Fair, business as usual for them in game two. Business as usual, yes. 15 seconds in. It's not for lack of trying. There's no scores on the boards quite so far. Are you? Okay, sorry. I was just making sure you're in here, Bass. All right, we're good to go. We're good to go. I, I admire your uh, your vamping capabilities there. Whoa, was that a known goal? Oh, no. Yes, it was. And I don't know if this was an unintentional loan goal or one of these things where it's just kind of like it's going in. But Peachy, I don't think, realized that was off target. They didn't have to touch that. Had they just waited for it to bounce off the backboard and then maybe pinched it against the back wall, would have been a much easier save. But the panic set in. Coastal got their first good offense. And all of a sudden, State Fair are scrambling back to try and defend it. Speaking of scrambling back, that's another one. Own goal for an own goal. Eye for an eye. And we're all tied up. Yeah, okay, so a <laughs> uh, unique look at this one so far. A hit across the top. Brazilian Bacon tries to come in and defend this one away, but especially given that his teammate is to his right, ball just kind of bounces in. Both of these scores so far come off the back of own goals. Interesting stuff. Coastal comes in and, and, and what, for like five seconds, enjoys a lead for the first time in this matchup as well. So it was short-lived, but I'm sure tasted sweet. Hey, and listen, for the team, to not make you feel too bad about this one, uh, this whole weekend for RLCS, I'm pretty sure in APAC, I saw a total of, I want to call it, five or six own goals in four matches, yeah. so don't worry about it. It happens to the best of us. It happens all around, and, well, right now, it's happening to both teams here, but the good thing is we're all knotted up here. One to one with only about a minute gone, so plenty of competitive Rocket League remaining, Ooh. but you can understand why the streak was just broken there. Stay fair, find their second goal, and this is all the offensive just being a nuisance there. Look at the construct or the just destruction in the net. Dylan completely confusing the defense, and all of a sudden, State Fair have the lead. I think in a large way, Curacao was not able to kind of get a, a good read on this one coming in, like was rotating and trying to get a better position as they were coming in. There's a shot across the bottom. Peachy, the last player back, does defend this one away, throw an epic on top of that. Now, Dylan, decent little hit, but that's Warhawk that had a solid... Solid lineup of this one. Ball was basically teed up for them. Now Waffle going off to the left side. A little bit of wall action right there as Peachy pushes players to get on top of this ball for the time being. Shot there. Now Peachy and the rest of State Fair forced to come on the back as Coruscant puts this one up. Brazilian Bacon coming in a little bit fast. I think that might have been assisted. Now a hit up. Brazilian Bacon blocks that one away perfectly for popping it up. Now a shot from over the top. Defended away from Waffle Cone. Nice to go. My oh my, this is getting really intense here. And by the way, this is really starting to show why we're saying that Coastal Bend are not out of this at all. They're starving off or oh, shaving yeah. off many of the shots that we're seeing out of State Fair right now to the point where State Fair are actually having a little bit of difficulty in breaking this defense here. Maybe they can do it with this shot. No, not quite. Warhawk tried to redirect it last second before Saw was there and in the way. Unfortunately, mm. not there for the follow-up. And finally, they will break the seal. State Fair find their third. Yeah, so Coastal Carolina, or well, Coastal Carolina, Coastal <laughs> Bend College, excuse me, coming in, and uh, th this is just kind of out the back of, again, kind of like bad reads and stuff. It looks like two players were off on either corner trying to pick up big boosts and stuff and not, like, kind of paying more attention to this goal. And th this is go time right here, especially against a, state, a team like State Fair Community College. They have shown what they can do when only given, like, a little bit of space. A little bit of space here. Like we said, it's 
it's definitely not as easy of a game in game number two here for State Fair, but it does kind of feel like they have the advantage. And the main reason I would say they have the advantage here is because at their best, Coastal Bend can definitely take down State Fair. But unfortunately, a little bit of inconsistency for the team, whether it be own goals, mistouches on the back end, or just general sort of confusion for the defense here have left Coastal Bend in some awkward positions and speaking of which Peachy gonna dump the last defender and a fourth goal will be found for State Fair. Yeah Warhawk taking this off the top right here and Peachy just teed up perfectly for them defenders coming in but once again that just kind of caught unawares is this Coastal Bend college squad. Waffle Cone 369, Brazilian Bacon, Corey Solid. They have time. I mean, at this point, last time, Bass, we were looking at like a five score difference. At three, this is much more manageable, especially given what we've seen so far, but not when you miss ones like those. The unfortunate thing is, is that it does also kind of seem like State Fair, though. Once they find momentum, they run with it. So for SFCC yep. right now, they found that momentum that they were looking for. And Coastal Bend been able to shots alone in this game yes they're playing more defense but it's equivalent to their saves two saves two shots in comparison to state fair who have five goals even if coastal Bend had hit every shot they've taken this game they still wouldn't even be at half the goals that state fair have right now yeah once again just kind of like the offensive performance and offensive time really going the way of the state fair college squad it's warhawk not really playing the same game as we saw earlier there's four shots for both dylan and peachy three shots made in for both of them to warhawk has only assisted, he has been on the assist for five now. That is very, very impressive. But no shots attempted, no shots made in the game number two. Another really interesting stat here for State Fair, though, is that they really are working as a team here. They kind of understand the roles at which they're playing. Peachy and Dylan are the front of their offense. They're at a hat trick apiece, three shots, or excuse me, three goals per person and four shots per person. And then Warhawk doesn't even have a shot this game. They haven't even attempted to try and put a goal into the back of the net here. They just have to Don't need to. Said, oh my word, Dylan will put in another shot here, but. At this point, it's one of these things where every single goal has been assisted, though. The only other assist we see is from Dylan, who also, like we said, has a hat-trick. So, stay fair, just intertwining beautifully here. The rotation from the trio really has left them in the lead. And, again, as much as Coastal Bend are still in this series, they need to find a way to start to slow down the state fair. Warsaw with a good little double tab actually makes Dylan now miss. Waffle Cum comes up with an attempted flip and hit. Not going to happen. Minute left in this one, redirect from Warhawk, looking to get on the board for the first time, not... Yeah, he doesn't really get a great angle on this one. Now putting it on over to the left, this is just a slow burn at this point. Oh, but Warhawk, get yourself a goal, my friend. Can you know it might have been an assist that Peachy sniped that one to the back of the net, but no such luck. State Fair, unfortunately, going to have to settle with a 6-1 to one, six to one for now, and maybe 6-2, to two, the no follow-up is off target. Brazilian Bacon with a huge opportunity, but... The good thing is, is I don't think that would have changed the outcome either way. With half a minute left, it would have just been a good goal for the confidence, but unfortunately yeah. not quite able to find it. I and mean, the idea would have been something, I mean, just uh, improvement, right? It's 6-1 right now, it was 6-1 at the end of the last game. At least, uh, you know, going from one goal to two would be something that Coastal Bend College could take home with them. Uh, or, excuse me, not take home with them, take them into game three, because at the even at the end of the day, if State Fair, Quinn State Fair takes this, it's not be over quite yet in this best of five. Still going out and fighting with all the heart. Love to see this. That's a shot down bottom, almost the follow-up from Waffle Code again. Now, I, I hate to root for the team in the lead, but I wanted to see one more goal. There it is, the Brazil. State Fair is going to take themselves that Brazil 7-1 to one with two seconds left, and... Uh, I, I don't know. I, I'm kind of happier we got to this versus a 6-1. to one. Somehow, some way, Brazil feels less painful. <laughs> there you go. At least it's a meme, right? <laughs> With the numbers there. Uh, at least, and, and again, at least one team is improving in some way, shape, or form. Not that State Fair really needs it, but at least there has some improvement, and we're just not watching the same exact scoreline across but almost the same exact game, like you said. Coming in and looking at this, State Fair Community College is looking really, really solid. They can do everything, even without Warhawk. Warhawk really was the... You know, they're like like the the head of their offense in this game number one, and a sharp uh, sharp look it was really with Warhawk kind of at the head of that one. There was a lot of shots attempted, and but everybody in game number one did make their shots. Now coming into this one, Warhawk assists six of the seven goals, so just kind of a transition of roles right there, kind of shows what can uh, they can all all three players of the State Fair Community College team can do. That's a big thing here is, is like you say, each player on SFCC right now are just kind of controlling this pitch. 
they don't need to all be shooting. They don't need to all be defending. As long as they recognize the roles that they are in as a first, second, and third man, they're going to most likely be able to control this pace of play. And that's what they're doing right now. Coastal Bend are trying to keep up with this really fast pace of play that is rather adapted to SFCC, and they can't really do so here. So Coastal Bend, yep. it's time to start breaking down this pace of play. Force State Fair into your territory and get them in these offer positions because so far here, I would say that State Fair have looked pretty much comfortable throughout this entire match. That's a, that's a fair statement. Just looking at a six and one seven one scoreline here, that's just, that's just the on paper the on paper fact of what we're looking at right now in this matchup. Now, not over with quite yet. There's uh, multiple different tricks, and the first one that really comes to mind for Coastal is just uh, start with the start with the demolitions, right? At the absolute least, you'll the four state fair members to burn a lot, getting away from you, and maybe to open up goal and whatnot. And th and that's just like kind of basic stuff. Anything else, Bass? Anything else here for the Coastal Bend College squad that might be able to take it back here in game three? I would agree with you on that one. Another way that you can really start, you know, to annoy that other team. I call that a nuisance play style. Get in their face, bump and handle them like crazy. But that other part that I said, get in their face. Don't give them no room here. Like we said, they fair a very mechanically gifted team. If you start to give them the space, they're going to set up shots like that. This time it is cut, it's cut, it is cut down. Warsaw will get in the way, but you are going to be enough. Coastal Ben, I would say they need this first goal in this game, Togbo. Yeah, I mean, they've taken first goal in previous game, and, uh, like they, you know, they were able to retain that lead for a little while, but an own goal kind of made that a non-situation. Corsa also with the uh, car change right there. Let me see it. He's sort of versatile, right? <laughs> right is a spice of life, Bass. <laughs> It is, and uh, well, I, I gotta, I gotta give credit to Coruscant where it's due because he also knows that he's picking the right car for the situation here. Recently, I believe it was in Regional One for RLCS, in which the Batmobile came back into popularity due to my boys on Williams Resolve picking it during a almost reverse sweep scenario against the number two team in Europe. So I was happy to see that the Batmobile is back in trend, and it was very yeah, happy yeah, to yeah. watch it firsthand. To see Coruscant pulling it out here also warms my heart, and no one else is gonna warm my heart. One minute gone, not a single team has scored yet, Tugboat. Yeah, at this point, we were looking at three or even four scores like in that first game. So this is hands down better for Coastal Bend College. They've made it now a minute and 15 or so. Warhawk and the rest of members of State Fair actually looking a little bit lost on the offense right now. That's a couple different plays they just haven't been able to communicate on. That issue is over as Dylan gets a solid slice to the left side. Sean, oh my. Warhawk. Oh my word. That's why he didn't have any uh, shots last game. He was saving them for the dagger here in game number three. Wow. Yeah, look at this. Just slicing right across the middle right there. Little Doolin Dragons at the end. 90 seconds into this one, so nice and even as well. Kurosal and the rest of the members that have Coastal Bin will certainly have to have that superhero play the rest of this game to try and bring this one back. Still got a chance. By far, there's enough time on the clock here that they can't get this one done. But again, we need to start seeing that offensive pressure. We mentioned that last game is that they kind of lost that offensive pressure we saw in the first game there. And it was due to the fact that they started to prioritize their defense a little bit more. Let's see them get in the face of their opponents. Let's see them get a little bit aggressive. It is backs against the wall. At this point, you got to lay all the cards you have on the table, including the ace up your sleeve. There's nothing to hold here. You have to show everything yeah. you've got in what could be the final game of this series. It very well be, and at the end of the day, losing by one is the same as losing by ten. That's not the situation they're quite in yet. They, once they score one more time, they can take a more even look at this one fast, but especially if they continue to go down, eventually it just pour it all into offense and see what happens. Exactly, they're going to have to throw everything they've got, and well, they're halfway through this game and haven't quite been able to display everything they've got here, but maybe they can break out of their half and do so now. That's all trying to just get a good touch on the side here, and actually will do so. They have a chance at dribble, flick center, Dylan able to get in the way. Corazon trying to set up his teammates, but notice how both of them are kind of clumped up at midfield there. That's the greatest look for Coastal Bend. They're going to have to be rather careful here. I think Corazon's the only player so far that's starting to get this never say die attitude. Going aggressive and even trying to get a double touch from a bump from his teammate. There we go. Waffle Co getting in the face of his opponents as well. Will there be a follow up? Was Corazon to attempt one? And I like that Brazilian's up for this early. And I think the pace of play is starting to go up here. Coastal Bend are recognizing it is now or never if they want a shot. Yeah, and I mean, still just keeping it to one goal is pretty darn good. They've had some seriously impressive offensive performances thus far. Now it's just making one of those connect. A dangerous Ooh. look across the middle. Coruscant stay up that one in its tracks. The heart attack is saved for now. Shot over the right side. Waffle coming up. Brazilian trying to get to it. Not going to happen. Dylan racks in the second for the side of State Fair. Uh, I want to see what happened to Brazilian here on this play. Did they get wrapped up on this post? Because that's kind of what it looked like. Is that, yeah, they unfortunately yep. came yep. off the post yep. rather yep. than just driving there. And 
Listen, I've seen it happen at every level. It happens to me constantly in rape games. The unfortunate yes. thing is, is that it's not really the most opportune time. With just about 100 seconds left, Coastal Bend now need to find two souls in a row. And after being shut out for three and a half minutes here, that's a very difficult task, especially <gasps> when Warlock can't put in what? another goal, and then this one's gonna go what? on in! Corso cross Gordon! Stay fair, punished for their inaccuracy! Yeah, Coruscant coming in, snapping axles, ankles, whatever you want to call it. PG isn't able to get to that one. Love to see this. 82 seconds left, and Coastal Bend hurts themselves a little bit of breathing room right here. New lease on life. Whatever you want to call it, Bass, Coastal Bend is still in this one. Oh my, oh my. With 80 seconds left, they not only are in this one, but they've really got a chance to make their mark. This one by Coruscant wants a double touch. We'll put it off target, though, just a little bit off there. But I like that. Coastal Bend immediately back in the face of State Fair here, and when they continue with this pressure out at midfield, decent custom Brazilian, but it's kind of going to no man's land. And wait, that no man's land is going to get double occupied. Two state fair whoa, players whoa, there. Whoa. And Brazilian almost able to get the doomsie with zero boost. What about the follow up? Waffle Cone is there, but so is Warhawk. Clears this one out with 50 seconds left. This is perfect for state fair. They don't need another goal, they just need to waste time. Yeah, that, this isn't exactly the keep away situation yet where they're just like really trying to like wing it left or right and waste time, but that's basically where it'll be in about 10, 15 seconds or so. Little bounce play, Dylan, the last player back, does come out on top, so still stays two and one for right now. 30 seconds left, classic look, classic 30 second drill here from the side of Coastal Bend. Coruscant trying to maintain, picks up the big boost. They just really need to get this out right now. Attempted pass, Coruscant has to reach for it and does. Now out to the middle, they need to get this out of their third right now get out very quickly they just need one more oh, oh no chance but they will not find it instead they will find the dagger here that is the fat lady saying that is the curtains that is whatever you want to call it on this game with 12 seconds left technically it's possible for coastal bend but they basically need two perfect kickoffs in a row yeah, uh, we'll see how this comes. It all comes down right here. Nope, they need to get out to this one, shake it out. If they if they score with one second left, then it's still technically possible. Nope, that is going to be it. A couple whips off the end. I mean, a couple whips off the initial. What am I talking about? That There was not a prayer answered right here. There was not a miracle on the pitch tonight. So, State, State Fair College wins fourth and took that one. Obviously, incredibly hard to get, you know, not just one, but two tonight, kind of different kickoff. Playments there, but at the end of the day, State Fair going to roll on through. In the first two games, it looked a little bit different from the third here, Bass. Yeah, it definitely did. The third game is really where we started to see State Fair come to life, and same with Coastal Bend there. It felt like a really good back and forth. State Fair were performing at, performing at their best, really getting that offensive efficiency we know and love, while also putting on some spectacular shot, and Coastal Bend really able to withstand that pressure and get some good counterattacks of their own. But again, the unfortunate truth here is that Coastal Bend was just a little bit muted on offense at four shots total when State Fair have three goals. You kind of just need to get a little bit more pressure like State Fair did at eight total shots. So this is a good learning experience, I would say, for Coastal Bend here. They do not find themselves at a 300 or excuse me, 500 record instead fall to mm -hmm. three and five now. But or excuse me, no, two and four now. But yep. there's still a lot of learning that can be done here and a lot of improvements that can be made just based on looking at the footage here. Coastal Bend are a capable team. If they can clean up in a couple little areas, they're absolutely going to be a capable squad that can take down oh, State yeah. Fair in a rematch. 100%. 100%. We are going to go to a very short break, and then when we come back, we get a little interview action coming at you guys. We only have winners in the interview box, and that will be a member of the State Fair Community College coming on in to give us a minute on a piece of their mind. Don't tune away, because Bass and I would honestly just take it really personally. <laughs> And we are back. The National Junior College Athletic Association eSports side. That's the NJC AAE. You see that, Bass? Continues now. Presented by the Army National Guard. We have a little interview action coming at you. We got Peachy to come on and give us a minute of their time after the game. Peachy, are you with us? Yep. I'm here. Glad to hear. Glad to hear. Bass, take it away, please. All right, absolutely will do, Peachy. First off, congratulations on the win, my friend. You guys played, well, to somewhat to the expected level there. <laughs> and uh, I have a couple questions about how you guys are able to perform at that level because we kind of noticed throughout the series, you guys really did have specific roles. In games where you guys were scoring a decent amount of goals, it was usually just two goal scorers. You basically kind of evenly distributed it while you had a man, uh, sort of a third man, hang back and play up a little bit but just kind of dish out passes is that something you guys actively look for to sort of make sure that you have a rotation where each player has a role or is it just sort of that's how good the chemistry is it just happens to fall in like that 
Yeah, we ha first off, we've built a lot of chemistry this semester. We've had we've practiced a good amount, and we've looked for passes. We've really hit hard on passes, passing plays, not hitting each other. You know, going for aerials mm -hmm. and double committing. Yeah, and that's a big one. And um. Our whole thing is based on, yeah, yeah, nervous. And our whole play style is based on us hitting each other, not being selfish. We're a really unselfish team. We like we like the passes. I think Warhawk had six assists in game two. Crazy. That's a that's a crazy amount. And um, yeah, and it wasn't really two of us throughout the whole series that was scoring. It would be two separate people each different game, and it would be one of us. Everyone had a scoring spree, so we played pretty well. Uh, that's what made you guys the most threatening. It really was the fact that you guys kind of had that, you know, uh, just every single one of you guys was a very capable player there. And I got to ask, is that sort of like the, just sort of the goal for the season is to just see improvement out of the three of you guys? W what are you looking for here? Because at this point, you're pretty much the top of the crop. You are quite literally undefeated throughout the season. You just took a three and O. Oh. Is the goal to just see improvement here or you guys want something greater? Do you want an undefeated season at this point? Well, we're looking at that undefeated season, of course, but mainly we're here to get improvement. We're looking at opportunities in our future, if whether it be going to a four-year college or maybe even doing content out of it, whatever it is, maybe pro, yeah. maybe. And uh, we're just looking to improve on all levels, all sides of our game, and it would be great if we can make something out of it. Well, Love to see it. Love to uh, see that's it everything for me. Talk about any questions for Peachy here, my friend. Yeah, so Peachy, you mentioned a little bit about this. I want to get into the man. You know, we've seen the player. I want to get into the man a little bit here, right? What are Peachy's uh, expectations? Like, po uh, obviously, there's the NJCAA, the National Junior College uh, Athletic Association. That's the two years. It's the first two years here. They do not. They do not work with colleges that provide those last two those last two years of college. If you do choose to go do that, what is it for Peachy? What is the plan here? What's the Peachy plan? Well, I've looked into content, but I'm probably just going to use it to hopefully get into a four-year and get maybe a deal. <laughs> but there you go. Because yeah, of course, yeah. you can do that. <laughs> it would not be the first time that's happened. Nobody would shame me for it for you, you know, whatsoever, whatsoever. So, um, Bass here kind of kind of touched on this a little bit, but you know, we saw the recent past here today. I want to talk about these three games, though, kind of like. What, what, just games one and two just had a b much different vibe it kind of felt. Uh, part of this came from the fact that, uh, that, that, well, yeah, that was Warhawk with no shots actually attempted in game two, uh, only the assists, and then you kind of had a similar performance in, performance in game three. I want, just want to ask you what kind of happened, what changed between games one and two and game three? Well, that I couldn't tell you. <laughs> but <laughs> we're, we're always switching roles on this team. We have a good chemistry. We all love each other. It's, it's a lot of fun. Um, especially with coach, coach is a great help. He hypes us up if, especially for our games, if we're feeling a little nervous, like for today and really in game two, I loved seeing Warhawk because in our past series, he's always been the shooter. He plays dominance. He gets those hard hits crossbar down. And usually it's me or Dylan setting him up for that. And, um, and in that game, he just passed perfectly six assists. Yeah, out of our seven goals. Does not get much better than that, does it? <laughs> it does not. No, that's uh, that's pretty much the, the top <laughs> of the top there. Like we were saying, you guys really do look oh. like you are in perfect form here. Uh, Peachy, I wish you luck, my friend. Honestly, I've got nothing left for you here, but we do also want to leave a little bit of platform for you. Peachy, anybody you want to shout out that might be watching right now? Uh, hi, Mom. <laughs> <laughs> oh, um... <laughs> How about the boys doing the watch party right now for me? Hey, uh, there you go. And uh, I think that's about it. Mom and the boys. I love it. I love it. This has been the NJC AAE Rocket League Match of the Week presented by the Army National Guard. This was Peachy coming on in and giving us a minute of his time after the game. And we appreciate you guys watching. We'll see you next week for some more NJC AAE action.